The third type of hypersensitivity involves the same kind of antibodies of the second type. So we still have IgD and IgM. But the difference is, uh, let's say the antigens themselves are not expressed on uh, the cells. So this means that the antigen antibody complexes that would look something like this. So here we have antigens and these are the antibodies. This is called a complex. If this is found in a blood vessel, it's hard um, to get rid of such a complex. And what happens is, here we have the, the blood vessel. Th this kind of complex is going to accumulate on the sides of the blood vessel. This antigen antibody complex is going to activate the complement, especially proteins. We have C3A, C5A. These would um, induce the basophils. So we have cells in the bloodstream, the basophils that we talked about. The basophils are going to secrete vasodilators. The vasodilators, in response to that, would allow the neutrophils through chemotaxis, so with the chemical guidance or direction, to go into the blood vessels. So we'd have neutrophils here. So these are basophils and these are neutrophils. The neutrophils are going to start to um, produce enzymes that would induce the tissue damage. In response to that, the blood platelets are going to accumulate in very, very large numbers in order to um, um, help to protect from the tissue damage produced by the neutrophils. All of this, of course, would block the bloodstream in the blood vessel. So, what this kind of hypersensitivity looks like, uh, it looks like we have erythemia. Erythemia is the, um, uh, the redness of the skin and we would have, in some cases, we would have also edema. An example for that is uh, serum sickness so we would have so it's an allergic reaction to a serum uh, we would have redness of the skin all over the body or systemic lupus systemic lupus where the redness of the cheeks is very very obvious so we would have uh, this kind of um, appearance and such examples. The response in case of the uh, third type of hypersensitivity is longer than the second type so we would have from three to eight hours in order to obtain such a reaction and the cells involved would be the polymorphonucleus. So we would have leukocytes let's say for example. And, of course, we have PMN complements, as we mentioned in the illustration. With the last type of hypersensitivity, type 4, we have a difference because there, there are no antibodies involved. The cells that are involved are the T helper cells. So, in this case, that type of hypersensitivity is called cell-mediated, so cell-mediated, while all the last previous three are called humoral-mediated, so humoral, 
mediated. Now, that kind of hypersensitivity takes uh, more time in order to uh, get a reaction. So you, we'd have from 48 to 72 hours or even longer. And uh, the cells involved are uh, like this. We have the T-helper cells. They produce cytokines. And the cytokines are going to uh, activate whether um, macrophages or T or cytotoxic T cells that are going to act directly on the cells that are recognized as non-self uh, cells in the body. So the appearance of such um, an immune response would also include erythemia. So we have erythemia, so redness of the skin, and we would have induration. In duration. An example for cell mediated response is contact dermatitis. So if you contact um, a substance that forms the skin inflammation or causes the skin inflammation or um, graft rejection, graft rejection. So, if you get a skin graft, let's say for an example, these cells in your body would recognize the cells of the skin graft as non-self because they're not from your own body and this kind of immune response would be induced. So, hypersensitivity type 4. So, that was uh, hypersensitivity with all its types. I hope it was easy and clear. And until the next time, I thank you for watching and... See you.